Here in this area, we have a lot of uh, carnivorous plants. They are not only rare, but they're also delicate to manage. You have to really pay attention to uh, the habitat that they're in what it, and understand how it's supported when you do things like logging activity, burning, um, any sort of road building, etc. We have a lot of them that live uh, basically in a pocosin, which is nothing more than an elevated uh, water table on an upland. It has created a, uh, a bog. Fire ecology in this area was actually naturally started by lightning. Uh, lightning strikes in the warmer months of the year uh, would, would actually strike and they would burn in like a mosaic fashion. And then obviously because of the summertime patterns, that's when we get the lightning. So it's very important that you time your burns and according to what the natural fire ecology was in the area. And what you'll find is, is that when you, you work with the Nico, an ecosystem and you follow the natural processes that were there historically, you'll find that your goals can coincide with the property, large or small, and you can reach reach the things that you want to accomplish um, and also have things like Venus flytraps or red cockade woodpeckers or gopher frogs or you name it wherever you are if you can work with the natural processes of an ecosystem um, not only will it be easier for you it would be uh, more economical for you as far as, as your work and the expenses there uh, from the, the sand hill savannas to the transitional zones to the river bottoms Fire has to touch every bit of it in order for us to be successful with our goals um, in wildlife management here on the property. There's really nothing that replaces fire in nature. Um, just as a natural disturbance in itself, it does a lot of work for you that you that would take thousands and thousands of dollars to replace even on a, a, a small scale. The ecological part of it is that there is nothing that touches the landscape like fire. When fire goes across the ground, it actually releases nutrients into the soil. And even though minute they might be, a lot of them are the nutrients that are the most scarce in the soil profile, like phosphorus. And when you have needle cast and, and dead branches and, and stuff on the ground, it will actually release that ash into the soil. The other thing is, is that especially here in southeastern North Carolina, plants and animals have evolved to work with fire. A fire actually will remove invasive species like um, sand box myrtle from overcrowding and choking them out. And with the addition of fire, not only are they the first ones that pop up, but you'll see multiple species pop up in the same area and continue to spread. In this area, we have a, uh, a transitional zone here behind me that is basically supported by the water running out of the, the sand hill on the high ground uh, that runs out into a drainage basin here below. And in that transitional area uh, is where all the fly traps are. There's, a, there's a, a bog that has created where the water comes out of the hillside. And it, it literally is a microclimate in the soil uh, right there where they, they cling to the moisture levels and the um, organics that are there. When landowners burn, a lot of times an area like this might be excluded from the burn plan. It's very, very, very important that you do not exclude it from your burn plan. But letting the fire go into these transitional zones is, is incredibly important to, for these rare and endangered species uh, that live in them. And if you don't, then there will be um, invasive species that will actually take over and change the ecology of these transitional zones. The key is, is that Fire is necessary for the reproduction of a lot of different things in this ecosystem and if you exclude it totally, then you, you're going to see a change that will be for the worse from its natural processes. In this situation behind me, it's, it could be very easy for uh, a logging operation to cut off the hydrology that feeds the area. If you were to do that, then you destroy the habitat that's so fragile, so fragilely supported. Before you take any action on your property, you should seriously consider a, a property plan that takes in your goals uh, and how you're going to get there before they go out and they take an action. 
because sometimes, depending on how fragile your land is, you may, you may not be able to get back what you just destroyed. In our situation, we took the time to create a plan up front. And although progress can be slow with land management, and it takes a little time, the, the rewards are very gratifying. And in our situation, uh, it, it's, been, it's been great to see the transformation, to see the indicator species come behind fire, to see the um, endangered species, such as red cockade woodpeckers, to take over the landscape and become have healthy colonies, to see the natural wildlife uh, fill the woods with their songs. It's, uh, it's very gratifying to a landowner to be able to see the, the work that they put into the landscape and the rewards that it brings. If you're interested in learning more about creating or managing habitat for Venus flytraps and other carnivorous plants, you can go to this website right here, venusflytrapchampions.org.